when you're in this experiment as a projector, we give you a lot of grace because you're the only type that can't follow your decision-making strategy until you've had a lot of time pass. And what's going to help you more likely wake up to the true you is recognizing how this works and seeing it in enough other people. And that's why I give you so much information so that you can be empowered to use this system with your family and friends. That's what's going to make the difference. Now, I hear a lot of uh, complaints from projectors that say, I don't have enough energy. There's something wrong with me. I don't have enough energy. I'm exhausted all the time. What gives? And that is coming from the fact that you're not using your energy correctly. You need to get to the place where you've mastered a system enough to where you get paid for the value that you bring and not the hours that you work, the value that you bring. And what happens is your mind thinks, I got to work, work, work. I got to do it all myself. I have to, must, should. If it's to be, it's up to me. And your mind is exhausting you with all of its busyness, trying to figure out how you're going to be successful or be safe or prove, you know, what you're talking about or, you know, inspire everybody else, answer all those questions. So if you're exhausted, it's a big signpost that you're doing too much. So would you be as exhausted if you weren't running around trying to prove your value or trying to get it all done or trying to resolve your fears and holding on to people, places, things, jobs that maybe aren't good for you? Are you trying to prove? Are you trying to, you know, answer the questions? Are you trying to attract attention? Are you trying to run after love and direction or hold a specific identity? Are you trying to avoid confrontation and truth? Are you trying to hurry up and do it quicker than anybody else? All to try and get validation from outside of yourself. The validation has to begin from within. So what I gave you just now were additional signposts, my friends. These signposts of how they can show up. And remember, it's a generality because your specificity of your design, it might be your communication and thinking. It might be your um, truth transformation and psychology. It might be your driving force. It might be your core essence. Wherever these activations are coming from, these are the places that create your uniqueness. And that's where I want to focus you on moving forward. Discovering your differentiated frequency means that you become more and more unique. Your opinions, your identity, your providing for, your caring, your um, recognitions, your feelings, everything becomes more and more refined the longer you decondition and the more unique you become and the more valuable your insight or your expression of your outer authority becomes to others because now you're not saying trite sayings that could apply to everybody. You're saying unique, specific advice to that one other person at a time. And that's why I changed my slogan from you know, dare to differentiate, change your fate. Very cute. Dare to differentiate, change your fate. I changed that to precise advice for leadership success because it is. Human design is. And Sammy is saying, how does it feel for you to be working with groups larger than five people? One on eight is a small group channel. Yeah, absolutely. So notice how in a group, this is about us being in person. And that, that's what Raw said. Ross said, the channel activations of what happens to you is that you become the voice of the group. That's what the 1-8 is about. It's a PR channel, all right? So the voice of the individual um, knowing and identity of the group. Now, what happens when I'm in a larger group is I have to really tone down and, and, and make sure that I step by step go through everybody's charts to make sure that I'm addressing everybody. Otherwise, people start to feel left out if I don't go through every group and make sure that there is something there for everybody that I have at least checked in. Okay, but I have to do it one on one. And I'm not in aura with you guys. But if I were in aura with you guys, guess what? I'd be so not self because I'd be so conditioned. Can I hold space for a large group? Short periods of time, if recognized and invited, here are my activations that can fit into the large group. But am I in charge? Am I in control? Only if the person who really is in charge has given up 
control to me and I can step in and explain or educate and then move out of the group. Otherwise, I exhaust and burn myself out. Yeah, I can't go on for days on end like I did in the beginning when I pushed myself. I can do short two-hour sessions and then take a break. And my maximum per day now is two two-hour sessions. That's it. And before human design, I would push myself all day and be working in groups of people and then become something utterly different than what I was. Be so deeply, radically conditioned that I was depressed and exhausted and burnt out and sick all the time, all the time. So remember, this is our recognition in that the energy is way softer online. I'm not physically being contaminated by the conditioning. When you speak, I can hear it and I can feel it and I can get conditioned and I can be uh, able to be guide because where our guidance comes from is from the conditioning. Okay, did I get all my, I think I did, yeah. So you can see that all of my large group except for one Here's another large group is coming from the unconscious. It's the body. Body is the life. So yeah, it doesn't feel bad. I can be healthy as I work. Yeah, it's my biggest recommendation to those of you who do not have um, the ability to hold space in a small or large group is to make sure you work one on one. I'm really glad you can relate, Melanie, because one on one is the only way you can protect your aura from being massively conditioned and burnt out in a real hurry. 